Hey there everybody, it's Eternal Snowman here with another anime video. This is going to be talking about uh, romance anime, which is my favorite genre, and I'm going to be giving you my top 10 favorite romance anime. Uh, so first I'll be going through the criteria of what makes this list work, so how I place things, why I placed it in the way I did, and why certain shows may or may not make the list. And then I'll be going through my 10 anime as well as a few honorable mentions and I'll be explaining why what each anime is about, uh, why I really like that anime, and why I like it in the context of romance, especially in the context of this list. So we'll start with the criteria, why uh, do shows make this list or not make this list? So we can start with the uh, shows that are have romance in it, but it's not a central theme, are obviously not going to make this list. So shows like, for example, Log Horizon, has romance in it, but it's not a central theme, it's not a core topic, uh, it's not something that is uh, explored very much or uh, done like heavily and not the core appeal of the show. And that's the biggest part of it, it's not the core appeal of the show. So a lot of the um, shows on here are going to be the core appeal of the show is the romance aspect of it, and that's why I like it, that's why I think it's good, and that's why I would recommend it to people. Um, some shows that don't make the list are because of the fact that it may not be the core appeal, it's not a central theme, or uh, something along those lines, and they may fit more in a different genre. I think a lot of the things, uh, genre, there's a lot of the shows in this romance category also uh, overlap with two other categories, one of drama. Uh, a lot of my very favorite quote-unquote romance shows are more suited to be uh, categorized as drama shows, uh, and also um, comedy. A lot of comedy and romance kind of fit together in the more lighthearted aspect of the shows. So um, I'm going to be valuing that very heavily in terms of my criteria. So uh, some shows I'll be kind of giving, um, I'll talk about what I believe for them overall, and then I'll be kind of giving my thoughts on them in terms of romance specifically, because this is about romance anime. So without further ado, let's move into the honorable mentions. So I have three honorable mentions here, uh, Kokoro to Connect, uh, Monogatari, and um, Say I Love You. Uh, I don't know exactly uh, how to say the, um, Japanese name, I think it's like Skite uh, Ina Yo. All right, sorry, that was terrible. Anyway, um, Kokoro Connect, I'll start with. So, Kokoro, Kokoro Connect is one of the shows I was basically talking about. The reason why this wouldn't make the list, even though I rate it higher than almost every show on this list, uh, outside of my favorite romance show, this is. Uh, overall rated better than every all of my other all of the other shows on this list. Um, the reason why Kokoro Connect doesn't make this list is because romance is not the core appeal of the show. Uh, this is about a group of students who basically go through a bunch of supernatural phenomenon that happens to like only them and they have to kind of struggle and uh, survive. Um, and they develop a lot of personal relationships that during this time and romance is kind of like I would say it's kind of close to being a core appeal of the show, but it's not really a central theme uh, as much as like some of the other shows on this list, and it's not really the whole point of the show. I think it's more about the relationship building and the drama and that kind of stuff as to why it's not on this list, even though I really, really enjoy it. I would highly recommend the show if you are looking for kind of like a drama uh, relationship kind of character piece. Uh, I think it's very, very good. Moving on to uh, Monogatari, uh, ignore the ordering, but the Monogatari series um, is a very critically acclaimed show uh, or like series. Um, the reason it doesn't make this cut is because kind of similar to uh, Kokoro Connect, I, in my opinion, my appe the appeal for me in the show is less about the romance aspect and more about the drama character aspect for the show. Um, I think that it could make this list um, if there was, like, it would probably be the 11th spot on this list, or 12th spot. Obviously, this is an honorable mention, 
but I think it's very close. And there are shows, the reason I didn't put it on here is because there are two shows that kind of mirror Monogatari, and I think they do the romance aspect better. Uh, I think Monogatari, um, the romance is hard to push because first off, it's like a harem setting. And also because I feel like um, the main aspect of Monogatari is more about the characters themselves rather than the relationships between the characters, which is very important in romance because I think bringing together the characters is really what the romance is about which is uh, demonstrated a lot in the higher end of the show uh, of this list even the, some of the lower end pieces have some very good uh, character chemistry and whatnot um, and say i love you is probably the one of the most pure romance pieces out there it has everything that you would want from a really good romance piece the only thing that really makes it miss out is that I think that uh, it's kind of a little bit more old fashioned and it doesn't have anything kind of that flares out. And on top of that, it's more of a depressing piece because the main character kind of struggles from confidence issues and whatnot. I think um, it's not for everyone and it's more kind of like a traditional, it's more of like a Western style story uh, of like kind of the idea of this like, um, like the un uh, unconfident girl kind of gets more um, confident as the days go on as she dates like a hotter guy or whatever uh, or something like that. It's kind of um, also like a shoujo, like as in it tells more from the girl's perspective than the guy's perspective, which, you know, it's not always a bad thing, but I do think that uh, this show t kind of didn't appeal to me as much also kind of like the visuals and whatnot also does factor into it but it definitely does feel really good it is really really good i mean being on this list means that you're within the elite of the elite in my opinion and uh of course say i love you is just on the brink there i think if um i mean like if the animation was just like a little bit crisper if it was like made this year i might have liked it more um i think there's like just a few things that i felt that could have been improved in it but it was definitely really really good still and it was it's one of the more pure love stories in terms of it's romance only it doesn't have that many distractions of like harems or whatever else that other uh, some of the other entries of this list will have uh so let's move straight into our top 10 and the first one is probably going to be one of the two that i think most people wouldn't expect to be on this list um and that's mayo cheeky so uh Mayo Chiki is a story about a um, guy who has uh, basically a fear of women. I actually forget the technical term. Um, but basically, if he, like, because of his, uh, his upbringing, he was bullied by women in his family. Um, he basically developed uh, an allergy to them where he, like, starts bleeding whenever he touches them. Um, and then the main female lead is uh, this girl, Subaru, and uh, she is a cross-dresser, and uh, she poses as a guy at school, and is, uh, you know, a girl, like, actually. So, basically, the romance part starts from the fact that they're both kind of, like, training uh, with each other to kind of get used to it. So, like, he's helping her kind of get used to being a girl. And then uh, she's helping him kind of get used to girls, uh, basically. That's like the general premise. So this is like the most lighthearted, least romance-focused entry on the show, uh, or on this list, sorry. Because it is not really a true romance. I think the core appeal of this show is romance, though. Uh, I think it's a very, very cute kind of uh, dynamic between the two main characters. I think they really uh, bounce off each other very well, and you really do root for them throughout the course of the show. It is a little bit more harem -y and kind of comedy, other stuff uh, mixed in there, but I do think the core appeal of the show really is about the two main characters and their dynamic together. Uh, I think there's a lot of different um, anime I could have chosen for this slot. This one, uh, of course, Say I Love You that I mentioned earlier. I think there's like a few others that could have gone here, like Haganai, uh, and I believe the name is Haganai, uh, I want more friends or something like that. 
are some uh, good options here. But I ended up going with Mayochiki because I felt that uh, personally this is just one that's more close to my heart as one of the early anime I've watched. So let's move on to number 9. Uh, ore gairu, uh, yahare ore no seishun, love comedy wa machikatteru. Or ore gairu uh, for everybody else. Um, this is one of the shows that is actually less romance focused. Uh, the first two actually are, but don't worry, the other few anime are still going to be heavily romance focused. Um, this one, however, uh, makes the list over Monogatari because I think this does more of a, a good job at the romance aspect of it. Uh, it focuses a lot on the main character's development, and uh, I do really think that um, while this is this is kind of like an antithesis to romance anime in a sense because it rather than being focused on the romance it's being it focuses kind of like on the absence of romance um and then it kind of does focus on the romance it's like it's kind of hard to explain but basically for those who haven't watched Origairu yet it's a story about uh a, like an unpopular un a socially awkward guy called uh Hachiman uh, Hikigaya uh if i remember correctly but basically Hachiman is basically uh, enlisted into a club called the, oh shoot, I don't remember the name of the club, but it's like the help club or something, a social charity club or something like that. Uh, and they go basically around to help people with their different problems at school. And he meets the this girl, Yuki Noshita, and uh, alongside her and uh, Yui Gahama, who is who is the other girl um, in the show, they basically go around and kind of like help people. But it's mostly about the kind of the character relations that they build throughout the show. And it and it's really about this guy who is socially awkward kind of breaking out of his shell and being uh, put in a scenario to help others. It, it's kind of like a self-insert in a sense because, um, you know, a lot of people who feel unpopular would always love to be in the situation where they kind of can meet two cute girls and you know have this kind of uh, rapport with them but it does definitely uh, is beyond that like Hachiman is definitely his own character and I think it's very very good uh, but the reason it's not higher on this list is once again it is not uh, a cool it is not like a pure romance show and unlike some of the other entries that are much higher on this list I feel like uh, some of the romance aspects of this are lacking comparatively. However, overall, I would highly recommend this if you're looking for a drama or character piece. Um, and also, uh, does it have uh, some really good romance aspects as well? So, moving on to number eight, I picked Netju no Susume for my eighth spot. Uh, now, this is a very interesting story. So, um, this one is one of the more pure romances. It's about a uh, older female and uh, who basically plays games and she quits her job uh, for like basically being tired of it if I remember correctly uh, at the beginning of the story and she is like plays a lot of online games um, and she's like very happy with this uh, or like she cross plays at, uh, wait no, no what, what's the word um catfishes is that for does that work both ways whatever point is she basically plays a male avatar in the game and then the guy that she meets is playing a female avatar so basically um it's like a very pure romance that's a little bit older since a lot of the romance that you see is the high school kind in anime this one is more of an adult uh, romance between two older people um, and it's a bunch of like coincidences. It's very cute uh, and wholesome. I think it's less to do with the... Um, I think part of it is that the reason why it's not higher is that it does feel very coincidental. A lot of the things kind of relate to each other and it doesn't uh, like kind of develop the characters in a very organic way. Um, it does feel like kind of a lot of the development has already happened um, before kind of uh, we see them in on screen for the first time and uh, it feels like um, sometimes that it's a little bit forced 
But at the same time, it's very cute and wholesome, and it's like just a very fluffy anime. So I would highly recommend it as just kind of a rec relaxing anime. It's also pretty short at 10 episodes. So moving on to number seven, another fluffy anime. And it's one I've talked about before, which is Tadakun wa Koi o Shinai, or uh, Tadakun Never Falls in Love. So this one is a very uh, pure high school romance. Um, I think it's kind of similar to Say I Love You. This also has a focus on photography. It's basically about a kid, uh, Tada, uh, Tadakun, who um, is like very interested in photography. And then one day he meets uh, Teresa, I don't remember her last, or her first name, her last name. I don't remember her full name, but she basically transfers into uh, his school and uh, they basically meet and she joins the photography club and kind of um, they develop a very close relationship. And uh, I think the biggest thing about Tadakun is that it is has like the most fantastic ending of any romance anime, in my opinion. It has it basically redeems a very average show into being, in my opinion, a great show. I won't spoil too much about it, but the ending for Tadakun was definitely one of my favorites and it left a big impression on me uh, for kind of like what I was thinking was just going to be a kind of average to like decently good, um, average to decently good kind of uh, seasonal anime. It kind of left a big impression on me uh, as the ending goes. Uh, other than the ending, though, it's a lot of very standard run-of-the-mill kind of romance, comedy, not comedy, but like kind of lighthearted uh, show. And it's very easy to digest. It's only 12 episodes, I believe, or 13. So uh, I would highly recommend it to anybody who just has that time. So another anime I've already talked about before, uh, Seishun Butayaro wa Bunny Girl Senpai no Yume o Minai, or uh, Rascal Does Not Dream of Bunny Girl Senpai. Um, and this anime is what I rated 10 out of 10, and I believe I said was the second best anime or third best anime of last year. Uh, I don't remember exactly, but uh, Bunny Senpai is actually fantastic. However, much like Origairu and Monogatari before it, uh, it is held back by the fact that it, romance is not a core appeal of the show. It's definitely a huge part of it, especially his relationship with Sakurajima Mai and a few of the other uh, core girls like I think a lot of people can agree that that it is a, a like a their different relationships building is definitely like a big attraction to the show um, I personally prefer this over Monogatari it might be because I watched it first um, but also because I feel like the characters in uh, Bunny Senpai kind of have more appeal to me personally but um, that's kind of like a personal preference thing right uh, Bunny Senpai is very similar to Monogatari in the sense that it is basically a group of, uh, or uh, there's the idea of a puberty syndrome, which is basically just uh, their way of saying that there's a supernatural phenomenon that happens, and then um, the main character uh, just tries to go around and solve all of the different uh, supernatural phenomenon that are happening with all the main girls, and then that's basically they develop relationships through that. There's not that much else I can say about it, but it is definitely very, very good. Um, and it's a highly, highly, highly recommend for me. I think there's a little bit more substance to it than Monogatari, and it's easier to digest for people who are not willing to kind of just sit through all of it, uh, all of the stuff in Monogatari, because it's so long and um, it's hard to watch, I would say. Uh, but uh, Bunny Girl Senpai is very easy to digest. It's very good. And I'm looking forward to seeing more of it. I hope that they do come out with more seasons in the future. Uh, I would say that the only thing is that it's uh, that keeps it from being higher on the list is that it does focus a lot more on the drama aspect of it than the um, like romance aspect in a lot of cases. And another anime I've talked about before, these three in a row, and I promise I believe this is the last one. I believe this is the last one. Yes. Uh, well, okay. Other than number one, which I think everybody already knows what my answer for number one is going to be. But give me one second. Let me just drink a little bit of water. And make sure to stay hydrated. Um, you know, 
Yagate Kimi Ninaru, which is the only entry on this list that is uh, same sex or uh, not between like a male and female, basically. I think Yagate Kimi Ninaru is definitely uh, one of my favorite anime of recent years and very underrated at that, um, in my opinion, at least. Uh, and it's really, uh, okay, so the story is about basically a, like a girl who kind of uh, is looking to, a first year girl in high school who's kind of looking for her place in school. And so she decides to join the student council after seeing uh, this, like uh, the, like an older upperclassman that she really admires. And she kind of is going through a period in life where she doesn't really know what she wants to do and is uh, kind of led in a bunch of different directions. And um, the older upperclassman kind of falls in love with her uh, immediately after seeing her. And uh, she kind of confesses and um, basically leads her along. And so the main character kind of... Um, main character just follows her because she doesn't really know she's at a period in, in her life where she feels like uh love is like important but she doesn't know like about a lot of different things so and she's very willing to kind of help um the main character or like the upperclassmen so she kind of just follows her uh in a lot of the uh just because she's like can't say no basically to a, to a large degree that's why she helps her uh i think as the series develops they develop a very like unique relationship but it's also not um it's also very organic and it feels very real uh i think the main appeal of this show is really about the two main characters uh there isn't really that much else to it to the show actually so i i would highly recommend it especially if you kind of like um just to see kind of like the different aspect of how you can tackle a romance show. I think um, this would still be good if it was not a same sex show, like if it was, you know, two, like a male and a female. Uh, and I think you could still tackle it in, in the same, like a similar way. Obviously there is, there would need to be things that would change about it, but um, I definitely think that this was one of my favorite shows. It's very underrated and it's very, very good. Uh, like in spite of being a Yuri show, um or like like um regardless of being a yuri show like whatever you want to say about it but it definitely is good uh like divorcing it from the fact that it's like a yuri show uh that said it is definitely one of my favorites in the past few years so i'd highly highly recommend it and then we're going to move into a show that i think is unpopular to like this much uh, I mentioned before that there's two shows that you probably wouldn't expect to see on here. This is one of the two. Um, and that is Koito Uso, or Love and Lies. So I think um, I wouldn't have this this high on a top 10 list if it wasn't uh, specific to a genre, and that is romance. I think Koito Uso is, has like some of the best romance and relationship kind of uh, moments in my opinion and I was very very captured by this anime uh, like when I was watching it um, especially I think um, this isn't really like a true harem or like but romance is still fine if it's like two main girls um, I think uh, Lil Lilina Sanada Lilina uh, the this girl right here um, is like one of like the relationship with uh, her and Nejima, who's the main character, uh, is one of my favorite in all of anime. I think kind of um, it just like is very natural and it develops very cleanly. Um, anyway, first, let's talk about kind of the um, premise of the show. Basically, the um, entire premise of the show is that uh, everyone is born with kind of a, or it's like in the future, or, you know, there's uh, the Japanese government needs to kind of make, um, make people like, or sorry, Japanese people have declining birth rates or whatever. So basically the government now uh, offic sends out official notices of who you're going to be married to at the age of, I believe they said 16 or 18 or whatever. I think it's 16 or 17. 
um, and you're basically sent the notice of your official partner and uh, you're expected to get married with that person. And uh, generally the match has to do with like your personality and how you like live your life up to that point. So it's like, uh, in general, the matches are like very accurate and the people who are matched together tend to like live very happy lives and like fall in love, et cetera, et cetera. But the main character is in love with somebody else. Uh, this girl right here. Um, and because of that, he confesses to her and she accepts his love and they kind of go out uh, as he receives the notice. Um, and that's basically the premise of the story. And uh, so like he tells his, uh, like Nejima tells his, uh, Sanada, uh, Lilina, like basically that um, he loves somebody else and she supports their love. So it's kind of like a weird love triangle thing going on but um i would say that uh the main appeal for me has been the romance and i definitely think it's an underrated show i think a lot of people kind of say it's bad but i really enjoy it and i think that this show has a lot of really nice moments between characters that i think are just like heart-wrenching so uh, i really really like it and uh koito uso takes the number four spot for me and then moving on to the number three spot is Relife. Um, Relife is a story about a, um, it's actually a little bit a uh, weird story um, in terms of premise. It's about a, like a guy who has like a kind of, uh, is fails at his job and he quits his job and go, when he's going back home, he meets this guy who gives him a pill that says and tells him that uh, if you take this pill, then you can relive your high school days, basically. So he goes back to high school, not like actual, high, his, his, it's not like goes back in time or whatever, but like he basically goes back to high school and his appearance is like made younger by this pill. And so um, in high school, he relives his uh, third year, I believe, in high school. Um, I believe it's just the third year for him in high school. And it's... Um, like with a bunch of like different class new new classmates and whatever and he basically makes a bunch of friends and then he meets uh like this girl and um like no spoilers or anything but i think it's a very very uh, wholesome show it is a little bit weird at the beginning because there's kind of undertones of he's like 28 or whatever and the kids there are like 18 but um yeah, it is definitely a very, very good show. So I would just recommend it on that alone. So I would just say that um, this show is one of the more wholesome school romances out there. I think it has a lot to do with uh, how, like, it, it definitely is very good. It's a little bit more plain in terms of animation and everything, but it's very good. Uh, I really, really enjoy this because of the web manga. Uh, that it is based off um, and that was like that is definitely one of my favorite manga of all time but real life is uh, the anime is still very very good uh, it captures everything that the manga most of the things that the manga does well and uh, it definitely portrays their relationship very well so I'm very happy with it and it, this is only like 17 episodes so uh, I believe or something along those lines so highly 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 recommend for me so moving on to number two uh, an all-time classic, I think most people can put this within their top five romance shows of all time, and that is Toradora. Toradora is super, super good, and in terms of um, romance shows, there is like not that much that's like better than this. Uh, Toradora is about a uh, guy and a girl uh, who have crushes on uh, each other's best friends, basically. Um, so they kind of one day figure, uh, figured that out from about each other. And because of that, they ask each other to help each other, um, like kind of get what their best, their, the other person's best friend. And that's basically the entire premise. So, but as they kind of are helping each other, they like slowly fall in love with each other. And, um, I mean, that's basically the entire show. Uh, I think it's a very, very cute romance because it's very organic. You can kind of see at the beginning, they don't really have any feelings for each other, but at the end, they're like 
really deeply in love with each other. And it's like a relatively long journey because a lot of the uh, romance shows are actually are the like the one season or half season, whatever you call it, the 12 episodes. But um, Toradora is like the full length um, 26 episode show. Uh, and I think both for this show and the number one show, uh, having the extra length definitely does add a lot of depth to the main relationships in the show and uh for Toradora that is definitely true as you can kind of see the progression there's definitely some filler episodes in there I won't say it's perfect I think overall it definitely ranks lower than some of the other shows I mentioned earlier for me like the um for example um Bunny Senpai for example ranks higher than it but it's definitely still really really good and I think the main appeal of this show has to do with the two main characters and their uh, like kind of relationship together. So uh, finally, the number one show, and I believe everybody probably thought that this would be the case, Sakuraso no Pets Nakano Jo, uh, also known as one of my favorite anime of all time. Uh, I believe to be my probably my second favorite anime of all time, but. This show, uh, I already made a video about it, which I'll link in the I button in the corner at the top right, if you want to check that out. Uh, basically, I think this show does basically everything perfect. Its core appeal is definitely the romance aspect of it. Uh, there's definitely other things to it, but romance is definitely a core appeal. I think the relationship between the main characters um, is basically perfect, Mashido and um, Kanda Sorata. And I really, really love uh, all of their interactions and that, and how Mashiro grows, especially in relation to Sorata uh, as the kind of the story progresses and she starts off kind of indifferent, but uh, grows to really, really like him. And it becomes very cute. And, um, you know, there's technically no conclusive ending between the relationship like some of the other anime uh, on this list, but I definitely still feel like the romance uh, is huge and it is definitely my favorite uh, romance anime of all time. Um, I'm not going to go too much in depth because I already did explain with another video, but um, definitely think that this is the best romance anime of all time, uh, in my opinion, of course. Um, and thank you guys for watching. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, let me know what you guys think of this format basically talking about all uh, anime and just going through a bunch of shows uh, like a top 10 list um let me know what you want to see in if i do like another episode of this and uh just let me know what you what your guys's top 10 anime uh romance anime are do you think i left any out that are like really significant do you think that uh or like maybe there are some shows i haven't watched yet um and which ones do you think maybe I overrated or underrated or whatnot? Um, and yeah, uh, let me know in the comment section down below. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like. And uh, if you did, and if you didn't, then uh, probably don't watch more anime videos. Um, yeah, but that's that. And I'll see you guys next time for more content. Thank you for watching.